Our ancestors knew their way around spirited drinks, and among the most popular beverages of choice in the 18th century were punches. These usually combined sugar, distilled spirits, and a sour element, especially citrus. They could be served in the aptly named punch bowl, like this Chinese export porcelain example believed to have been owned by Patrick Henry, who was known as one of the most spirited of our founding fathers. Henry himself was not so keen on drinking, besides the occasional low alcohol content small beer. So I assume he kept this on hand for family and guests. This bowl has been on loan from the Virginia Museum of History and Culture for 108 years, since 1912, and they received it as a gift from Henry's last living granddaughter in 1892. The bowl can now, or at least in more normal times, be seen at Patrick Henry's home, Scotchtown, in Hanover County, Virginia. While you can't go out and see Patrick Henry's punch bowl, you can stir up your own spirits at home and serve it in whatever you want. Uh, the best that I can do is this classic mid-century Pyrex bowl. Hi, I'm Leah Lane. I'm the curator of collections for Preservation in Virginia, and today we are going to attempt to make a Duke of Norfolk punch. I say attempt because we'll be making do on a few key ingredients, both because what we have on hand today is different from the mixologist of the 18th century, but also because, well, quarantine. The recipe we're going to use is taken from the 1823 cookbook, American Domestic Cookery. The versions of the same drink appear much earlier. Uh, the earliest I can find was printed in the Scots Magazine of 1745. The reason I chose this particular version is because it doesn't require a barrel or gallons of brandy, uh, neither of which were available and or advisable given that it's just my husband and I who will be taste testing. I'd like to introduce my fellow mixologist now. Hi, I'm Mitch Oxford. I'm a PhD candidate in history at William and Mary. And my husband. The recipe Mitch and I are going to use calls for ingredients that are not available at our local grocery store, specifically Seville oranges, which are also known as bitter oranges. Uh, fear not, though. The internet has an alternative for everything. You can use a combination of grapefruit, lime juice, and orange zest. You know, we decided to play things safe and order pickup from the grocery store, uh, which included the grapefruit. And we did get grapefruit, sort of. At any rate, we'll try adding some clementines instead. Not at all what is, not all the same, but uh, we'll call it recipe personalization. Norfolk punch is considered a clarified milk punch. The way it's clarified is through the addition of milk to a largely acidic mixture. Now, some of you may already be thinking, wouldn't that curdle the milk? And absolutely, it absolutely curdles the milk. And does that sound like an appetizing drink? Yeah. Are we still going to try this? Absolutely. After all, the drink is ultimately strained to be clear of all of those chunks of dairy, or at least that's what we're drawing for. Besides making the final product beautifully clear, there are benefits to this process. It softens the flavor of the spirits used, which is really good because we got very cheap brandy, and <laughs> it helps preserve the mixture. So it could be bottled and kept for months, even years. Um, we're not going to attempt that, but it could be. Now, things you're going to need for this recipe. First of all, the stuff. We decided to use a teapot, as this recipe calls for. Now I've reduced the amounts in the original recipe so that it fits in my standard four cup pot. So you'll see some odd quantities of the ingredients. We're gonna combine it into a clear measuring cup for sheer entertainment value for this video, but you can dump things right into your teapot. You're also gonna need a jelly bag, which is a fine strainer that's often used for making preserves. Um, but you can also use a cheesecloth or coffee filters. We weren't able to get a hold of a jelly bag so we attempted to use the cloth and filters, and stay tuned for how that turned out. So for the ingredients, and I'll put the amounts for all of these into the description for this video, you're going to want to have lemons that are pared thin and juiced, bitter orange juice or a substitute for that, and I'll put the recipe for that also in the description for the video, white wine, brandy, sugar, and whole milk. All right. 
also mix together all the ingredients except for the milk. Place the milk in the teapot, or in our case, for visual effect, we're putting it in a glass measuring cup. Gently pour the acidic and alcoholic mixture into the milk, not the other way around. You're gonna see it immediately curdle, which is good. Don't worry about stirring it. Let the mixture rest for 24 whole hours. We checked in on it after about 15 hours. So it smells a little bit like bubble gum. It's been 24 hours, and I should say it's been sitting out during that time. We didn't refrigerate it. You'll notice that the curds have separated somewhat from the rest of the beverage, and there's no need to remix this. Pour the whole thing through a thin jelly bag or layered cheesecloth and repeat. At least that's the ideal thing you should do. We tried this and we only had a small strainer to support our cheesecloth. And if you had a larger one, this probably would work better. But ours clogged up so quickly with the curds that it was very, very slow. By the end of the process, we had switched to using coffee filters that were uh, placed across the rim of a mason jar. And that actually worked really well. And you can see it dripping through. It still takes a long time, so we actually ended up having a couple of mason jars going at once. All of our Norfolk punch has now been strained, and it's time to give it a try. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's this really beautiful color. It's kind of golden. Um, what color would you call it, Mitch? It's a, kind of a chartreuse. Yeah, yeah, there's a little tinge of green to it. It looks beautiful but does it taste good? I'm gonna let Mitch give it the first try. <laughs> okay. Mm. Yeah, that, that's absolutely delightful. Yeah, that is really good. It's, it's sweet, it's very smooth. Um, you do get a little bit of the bubble, bubble gum. I mentioned earlier that there was a bit of a smell of bubble gum. Um, this still has the flavor, and that sounds a little strange, but it's actually really quite delightful. Honestly, it, it's kind of like a, a dessert wine. It's certainly sweet, but it's in no way cloying. Yeah, it's really good. Well, I would call it a success, and I hope that uh, you will give the Norfolk Punch a, a shot Milk punches in general are a lot of fun to play with, and let us know how it goes. Cheers!